Hello, welcome back to the Napoleon Hill series. This is lesson seven, self-discipline. Self-discipline. And as you read Napoleon Hill's materials, he tells you that if you'll master this lesson, self-discipline, he makes several promises to us. He says your imagination will become keener. He says your initiative will increase. He says your enthusiasm will increase. The scope of your vision will widen. Your problems will melt away like the sun on a hot day or like the snow on a hot day. He says your personality will become more magnetic. Your ambition will become stronger. Pretty much everything about you is going to get better if you master self discipline. There is no discipline but self-discipline. But he uses this analogy. He says this is the bottleneck through all the other lessons in the series flow. That if you don't have self-discipline, all the other things aren't going to do you much good. You need self-discipline to control your thoughts. You got to be able to control your thoughts. You got to think about your definite major purpose. And you got to think first, act second. I think you'll agree with me, most people do the exact opposite of that. They act and then, oh, if I'd have been thinking, I wouldn't have done that. Well, think first, act second. You have to control your emotions. Nobody can go out and just, when you're mad, you act mad. When you're happy, you act happy. When you're sad, you act sad. There's times when it's not appropriate to act the way you feel, and you have to control your emotions. Once again, most people don't, but we're not talking about most people. We're talking about Napoleon Hill students. We're talking about people that are looking for a way to do better. You also have to control your attention. Now, as you remember, basic principle, definite major purpose. You got to control your attention and keep your eyes on the prize. You got to have your eyes on the prize because especially in today's world, and Napoleon Hill would be flabbergasted at today's world, if there's just everything in the world is vying for your attention all over the place. Pay attention here, pay attention here, pay attention there. You have to control your attention and you do this with self-discipline. Now he points out that you have to control lots of areas, but he just gives us the major four. Number one, your appetite for food and drink. You can't eat too much, can't drink too much. Your mental attitude, it's up to you to stay positive. The world's not going to keep you positive. You've got to keep you positive. That's your job. You do that of what you take in, what you study, what you pay attention to is going to affect your mental attitude. So you got to be making sure you're feeding your mind what your mind needs. Use of your time. If you use your time wisely, you're going to do well. If you use your time foolishly, you're not going to do well. And all you have to do is pay attention to one day and you'll know how you're doing with that. And also, it's up to you to keep your mind on your definite major purpose. If your definite major purpose is to accomplish this goal, you got to be paying attention to this goal. Let everything else step aside. So self-discipline starts with controlling your thoughts, controlling your emotions, controlling your attention, and you have to learn to act first. Did I say act first? No. Think first, act. You think before you act. You think before you act. If you think before you act, you got self-discipline. You know what you want, you know the actions are going to lead you there. That's the actions you take. You don't go do something that's going to lead you away from your goals. So think first, then act. The number one rule of self-discipline. Self-discipline, it doesn't matter what you say. It matters what you do. Do what you're supposed to do. Have self-discipline. 
We'll be back for another lesson in a short while.